Hello and welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from three very exciting countries across Europe. I'm joined here to, from three very exciting countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by Alexis. From Belgium. Bonjour. David. Hey, from Germany. From Germany. Hello, is it? Yep. Cara. Also from Germany. Hi. Uh, and I'm your host, Fen. And today is a about one game which has captured our collective imagination and excitement in the recent months. And we're very fortunate to have a special guest here for it, which means it's time for me to hand over to Cara for the rest of the introduction. Away you go. Yeah, today we are joined by uh, an artist and game designer and also, write, also writer who's most mostly known for uh, Tsukuyumi, the board game, but also uh, created an RPG system, Opus Anima, and uh, several graphic novels. So um, welcome, Felix Mertikat. Hi, happy to be here for the invitation. So um, welcome, Felix Mertikat. Hi. Happy to be here for the invitation. So how was your how, Hello. how was your day or, or, already? Well, I'll start. Um, I've had a fairly fun day dealing with uh, a load of wood that arrived because our um, uh, we a load of wood that arrived because our um, uh, we live rurally and our heater, like most heaters in Sweden, is actually a wood burner. Um, so locally sourced birch is grown and I spent ages stacking that and then came in here to write a ages stacking that and then came in here to write a, uh, a bit of a review on Unfathomable from Fantasy Flight Games, which is the new um, Battlestar Galactica game. Well, it's Battlestar Star Galactica reskinned. Um, and I well, by the time this episode airs, dated because it's a 2008 game that hasn't really been updated at all. Uh, but otherwise, um, if you've got Battlestar Galactica, just you know leave it on the shelf. Um, the original Battlestar Galactica mostly is better. But that's that's all I'm going to be talking about other games for. Except I think we might talk about EOS near the end of this because I'm super. Yeah, some uh, application pictures taken. Because, like, you know, I'm going to start looking for a new job, but first I have to finish, like, all my lectures for my bachelor professional or craft, uh, master craftsmanship. And, yeah, that was a lot of work, but now it's getting better, I think. Perfect. Um, I spent my day in school um, torturing young minds with math. And um, <laughs> <clears throat> so it was fun in a way. But also pretty stressful, of course, uh, especially with uh, the pandemic. Uh, we have to test the students um, twice a week. Oversee the um, rapid COVID tests of fifth graders, which is not as fun as it sounds. And I know it doesn't sound fun. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that. Also, um, I'm not really looking forward to more work, but uh, to more work, but uh, because of new regulations, pregnant women are not allowed to teach in person. So I agree to take over another class and working more than 100% now. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And finally, Alexis. <laughs> Uh, on my end, I've been uh, I've been g getting some games uh, on the table recently, which is which is pretty pretty good after uh, some hectic uh, hectic few weeks. And I played uh, a bit of viticulture with my with my family, which is a very fun, uh, extremely Euro game about uh, Walker placement about uh, Walker placement that we'll probably talk about later about making wine. And uh, I've also finally started reading the. Uh, the rule book for the Dune game, given that the movie is coming out, and uh, we we will probably uh, talk about it some uh, some at some point. Um, you say the Dune game, which we did, one? Uh, talk about it some uh, some at some point. Um, you say the Dune game, which did, one? Do I know you this mean? a lot. This one is just called Dune. I'm not sure did, which. That's probably then. Is it the original one? Is a map with lots of conflict? Yes, I think yeah. it's the one with the uh, um, sandstorm that's moving on the map. Oh yeah, conflict. Yes, I think yeah. it's the one with the uh, um, sandstorm that's moving on the map. Oh yeah, the original game. Yeah, 
I've, uh, my sister gave it to me uh, a few months ago, but before because of the pandemic, it has been hard to uh, to finally play it with people. But uh, hopefully soon I'll be I'll have something. Uh, it's been hard to uh, to finally play it with people, but uh, hopefully soon I'll be I'll have something uh, ready. Yeah, that, that's a big hit with my friends. Um, one of them in particular absolutely loves playing the Ben Gesserit because he doesn't want to have to win. He just wants to predict who wins. Um, which is a fun mechanic. Uh-huh. I'm looking forward to uh, the one that we'll talk about Dune in the future because I still have not played um, that the, the new Dune by Gale Force Nine ever. I've played the previous version from Fantasy Flight, which was Rex Imperium or something, and I've played the original Avalon Hill one because one of the guys I used to uh, game with in car. Uh-huh like a pretty big game with a lot of rules and it seems the kind of game that needs a lot of time to explain the rules to the people I'll play with so I'll, uh, I'll probably get an evening ready with a few friends uh, and you know sequester them at my place until they finally learn the rules and play the game yeah well that sounds great uh, Sukiyumi which uh, I, I just could say um, Kara introduced me to it uh, she was talking about it quite a lot within our um, general <laughs> chat and chats um, and I was like mm, okay a bit interested I looked it up on Board Game Geek and I'd actually realised I'd looked at it before because I'd seen the whales and the dragons and so I'd seen the whales and the dragons and I was like I really like these models this is interesting but it got filed in the back of my mind um, and then my local game store which is on the mainland I live on an island off the coast of Sweden in the Baltic um, so they're on mainland and they actually had like the full kickstarter drop in and that was always nagging in the back of my to drop in and that was always nagging in the back of my mind of like <laughs> should I shouldn't I I don't know um, and then I took more looks into it after Kara talked about it some more and Mm -hmm. for me and it's not a direct comparison but for me I looked and I was like oh hexes oh asymmetric stuff and like points based objective I looked and I was like oh hexes oh asymmetric stuff and like points based objectives this reminds me of Nexus Ops which is my favorite tiny board game for war game it's 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 very trashy um, but it takes place with a central monolith and it's a tight board and you play four players and it's all points all points driven for winning which always felt better for me than just you're in a conflict conquer each other instead you're being given objectives by a corporation mm-hmm. and so i was like okay i'm 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 on board we've got asymmetric factions we've got like a central in this case the moon central kind of thing uh, that pulls everyone together as something to do uh points based stuff and then um i saw that it was like non-luck based combat resolution and i was like oh i have to have a go with this because that's i'm not a big fan of all my plans falling apart because i can't roll very well and i'm famous for rolling badly on dice (laughs) yeah and then uh, Kara was kind enough to to run a teaching game and i've played about a dozen or so games since well um yeah yeah uh, my friends had a big click with it and liked some of the factions. Um, uh, Kara played with one of them, Sam. Uh, he played the... Um, I, I, I want to say Cyber Samurai. Um, that's the name. The, it's, I, I was thinking, like, is it Cyber Samurai? Is it that simple? And it is brilliant. Um, <laughs> uh, and he, he really enjoyed playing them. So we went back and, and played it a few more times with other people and things like that. So it's, uh, it's one of those games that we keep meaning to get onto the table again. We just need to arrange the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to play the solo game, or I want to play it cooperative, but I just haven't found the time yet. Sure. But I, yeah, I'm. Uh, I have it. I have it all so far, uh, and I still haven't played with the dragons. Oh yeah, they are the like dragons. The yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's me, um, uh, Alexis. You've you, you've played it as well. Uh, yeah, I've only had uh, two games on it. Once with uh, with Kara and I think you and Eleganza. I'm not sure who was the the last player. Maybe David. David. No, no, I, I missed David. No, no, I, I missed it because I was busy in real life. Yeah, uh, and I and I played it once with a couple of friends over uh, Tabletop Simulator 2, and it's it's really interesting. I would. Um, I, I really enjoy it, and I, I probably will uh, will jump for it when the uh, when I when I have the funds because um, I I probably will uh, will jump for it when the uh, when I when I have the funds because um, 
I, as the fan said, I really like the fact that there's not a lot of dice roll in the game. Uh, I mean, there's some randomization with the cards and everything, but um, otherwise you can be pretty sure of how things are going to go during your turn. And I read cards and everything, but um, otherwise you can be pretty sure of how things are going to go during your turn. And I really like the way that the, um, the turn order is decided and where, you know, being the first to act is usually a pretty, pretty bad idea. So you kind of have to um, compete for the last place sometimes. Um, pretty bad idea. So you kind of have to um, compete for the last place sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I had a pretty good experience with it. The only the time that I the the time that I played with um with Fen, it was uh, I played as the um, uh, what is it the, the giant bugs fact extremely different, which I think is also um, if not the the most interesting aspect about Tsukuyumi, uh, the the extremely asymmetric asymmetric um, situation between all factions. Yeah, that's what this was the main uh, design purpose of the game. No playing aspect of it. Uh, when when I'm open a box and I say, okay, I want to play this thing, and then it plays not like you would expected it. That's what drives me away from games sometimes. And I wanted to create a game where you say, okay, I want to play an, uh, a species of insects, and every dragons play like dragons. Okay, play, dragons are not good in conquering areas and hold them but they are pretty good at destroying and devastating them and then move on and move on and move on so that's that's the the, the, the what what drove me to create Tsukuyumi is to explore annex in a set uh, amount of rules and we always come up with new ideas of factions uh, and, and new rule ca- mechanics and and none of that makes it bigger as it is. Like the Dark Seed have more than 30 units, but still the, the resolving of the round is not very much longer than the resolvement of the Fireborn, for example. Um, that's actually something that I, I wanted to ask. Uh, how difficult was it to, to balance uh, all factions regarding each other? <laughs> It's easier than uh, one would ex- expect, as the game has a balancing mechanic internally. Like the number of attacks, the, the conquest attacks you have, is not determined by the faction, but by the um, by the chosen activation cards. So no matter how many chosen activation cards, so no matter how many. How, how, what faction you play, you have a set amount of uh, um, combat actions you can take. So killing the other units will definitely most cost you victory points. Conquering areas will give you victory points. And most cost you victory points. Conquering areas will give you victory points. And from that, I mostly had to decide... Does one or two or three factions need more combat actions to be balanced with the others? Or do they need more combat actions to be balanced with the others? Or do they play well with the set amount? And that's one of the main balancing tools. The other uh, balancing tool was, of course, player interactions. So... Uh, the strongest actions so the, the strongest players will always face the strongest enemies and then only then it came to the balancing and it took me four years of balancing that factions so yeah it was a pretty big effort to to find the problem it's like reducing you have a lot of cool ideas for a faction you have to reduce to the three or four, maximum five different set of rules or special rules you need for a faction. And uh, as Kara can see with the Sunrise Kingdom expansion, uh, she can see like the still only underperform and I have to find out what, and they had seven rules. None of them really helps because one rule makes makes that faction so strong that all other players just jump right on that faction and destroy everything they have. Completely invisible. No one really, uh, like I'm talking about the Sisters of Seven. 
that they were like, okay, if they don't play with the, with us, I don't care. I haven't seen her them anyway. And it's it's like some factions you have done in your first take, and others take take, and others take twenty or twenty five iterations until they work. So I, the, the the short answer is. Sometimes I'm really lucky with the balancing on the first or second try, and sometimes it needs one year with other fans, and <laughs> needs one year with other fans, and uh, that's why the the development time of Tsukuyumi is not something I can perfectly assume or, or plan, but I can say within one year. I mainly get um, things. He gets um, things right. <laughs> for for our listeners, oh, go on. I was going to say for our listeners, just to give you an idea, this is the number of factions we're talking about. There's the Cyber Samurai, there's the Boar Lords, there's the Nomads, the Dark Seed, there's the independent faction, Lords of the Lost Sea, and there's you're working on, um, is it the you said the Sunrise Kingdom, and isn't the Chrono Master faction? Yeah, we this have is... the we have the Chrono Masters, and we have the Dark Crusader, which is oh, yes. the Kampfgruppe Eins, like the the uh, the. The second battle group of marauding around, uh, and we have in the Sunrise Kingdom expansion we will have the Moon Circus, like post-apocalyptic clowns that the tame and hunt Oni. We have the Coral Reef, which is actually a coral reef, and you don't have any units. You cannot you cannot fight or clan, which is an a faction of former Abor- Aborigines that play can create formations on the, board, on the board and we have the Sisters of Seven and we have the First Guardians which is an affection f- of um, ab- turtles and torch ab- turtles and torturers with uh, um, jade shells so it's for what so it's seven factions more than you uh, uh, counted at the moment so we were we're talking about a total of 17 factions at the moment there you go if there, there you go if there's almost certainly a faction for your particular preferred play style within this game exactly Absolutely. that's that's what i mean yeah. with the the, the role playing aspect um it's it's it it feels good if there is something that relies to you that you have a feeling about like so it's it, it it feels good if there is something that relies to you that you have a feeling about like some people will never ever play or can play the fireborn not because they are bad players or good players but certain play styles fit other players for me the same um or good players but certain play styles fit other players. For me, the same. Um, I cannot, you know, actually, I, I, I should play all factions the same, but I can't. <laughs> uh, I'm way better with Darkseed uh, and uh, Cyber Samurai than I would be. I can't. <laughs> uh, I'm way better with Darkseed uh, and uh, Cyber Samurai then I would be with the uh, Fireborn. Even though I know the perfect strategy with the Fireborn, but I try to ha- have hesitations in uh, in offensive play. And that's really, really bad, bad uh, for, for Fireborn. You need to jump right in and destroy it. You know, even though I know how to play them, as it's not my play style, I don't uh, perform very good with them. Uh, I was wondering if there's any uh, unplanned interaction between two factions that you've noticed or uh, or uh, any stories that you have to share regarding that. Actually, there are a lot of it, and that's why I, what I love about Tsukuyumi. I played more than 300 games or maybe 400 games already, and here comes the fun part of my job. <laughs> um, I invented all these factions, came up with G's and weaknesses and strengths and all this stuff. And I'm coming to uh, to the Gen Con play. A, uh, as I, I, I watch how players play a game of a game I played 200 sessions of my own. Of. And there's a new player, and she's like, "Can I do this and this?" And and uh, the game master said, "Like, oh damn, that's a pretty good strategy here." And 
Also, when I watched uh, Kara and Ani uh, for uh, in the in the Tsukuyumi um, Championship, and they they really used strategics and tactics I never seen before, and that's what I love. Like, which of these routes can you exploit or use a way I did not uh, come up with in the first place? And until to, to na- today, uh, um, there is no bad interaction between factions. It's not like there's a faction to, to na- today. Uh, um, there is no bad interaction between factions. It's not like there's a faction that blocks all others and they, they will always will lose because factions are most of the time Con- uh, concepted as being all others and they, they w- always will lose because factions are most of the time con- uh, concepted as being progressive, being adding stuff to the game, not blocking stuff from the game. And that's that's maybe the, the magic of, the, of it, have being adding stuff to the game, not blocking stuff from the game. And that's that's maybe the the magic of the of it having progressive factions adding stuff uh, will really rarely uh, block other factions of having fun. Like like for example, uh, factions that would say all other players cannot fly anymore or move anymore. That will co- cause a lot of problems within the rule mechanics, and that's why we don't have that. Wow. Uh, I, my, my question is, um, uh, I really want to know about the process of designing a faction, because um, typically in game design, this is for our listeners, you'll either come up with a, a top-down or a bottom-up design. So a top-down design is you have the idea of the theme of the things, and then you build the mechanics to it, and a bottom-up is you've got a design. So a top-down design is you have the idea of the theme of the things, and then you build the mechanics to it, and a bottom-up is you've got a mechanic, and you build uh, up from the mechanics. So um, what's your process with like creating a faction? Maybe you could talk about one of them um, a bit, about how you got the idea and, and brought it together. Progresses. Um, as Tsukuyumi is a fluid process, I have my fixed list of factions that should come. I, I here, right, right in front of me, I see the list of all twenty-five factions that we want to uh, have in uh, uh, one day in the future. If uh, at the moment we have seventeen, oh no, it's then it's uh, uh, it's eight eight factions more. Um, not counting factions we we develop on the way, like the Chrono Masters or the there's there should be a Polish faction from our Polish um, publisher, but coming back that really depends on where in the process the faction is is forged. So let's say before we started working on the Sunrise Kingdom, we had a fixed uh, um, set of factions. We wanted to have the Laser Vikings. We wanted to have the Sisters of Sorority the Vikings. We wanted to have the Sisters of Sorority. And we ha- wanted to have the Coral Reef, the Aborigines, like the Circle of the Sun, and the Moon Circus. Uh, on the way, we, we understood that the Sisters of Sorority should be rebranded. They, call, they are now the, now the Sisters of We understood that the Sisters of Sorority should be rebranded. They, call, they are now the, now the Sisters of Seven. And the laser Vikings obviously are not in the box anymore, but not they they not they were not thrown out of the box, but we had to retheme them. But not they they not they were not thrown out of the box, but we had to retheme them, um, as we had a really good set of rules, a perfect set of rules, which do not fit the theme of the faction, because we had a faction that are really good. In uh, the faction, they are really good in uh, defense. And if you think of laser Vikings, they should not be good at defense, obviously. <laughs> so we had to come up with okay, either we are we are going back to to, to zero and start and starting uh, the laser Vikings, or we make this. 
we move the Laser Vikings to the Blood Moon expansion, which will host another five faction in the future, which it, it belongs good because it's Blood Moon. It's obviously factions about warfare. It's all blood. <laughs> okay, so Blood Moon will be it. And um, introduce these uh, jade shell turtles to the cosmos of Tsukuyumi, created a really nice backstory for them, and integrate it to the cosmos. So we use both at the same time, having a thematic approach. So I, we have the Laser Vikings theme and going back and re reinvented a theme for the same room mechanics. So that's so there's no set answer which comes first. Sometimes the mechanics comes first, sometimes the ideas coming first. The good thing is about having the, the theme coming first is you come up with up with weirder and more special ideas. Let's say the coral reef. I said, I want to have a coral reef in that game, like a strategic area control game with a faction with no units. That's unique and I want to have that. Coming from the theme, it was uh, plain obvious was what kind of elements do you have to avoid and have to have to use if you come up with uh, the, the other way around sometimes creating okay what kind of rule would be cool in the game uh, can feel a bit off in the first place but once you but once you you have the right theme for it it could fix per, uh, fit perfectly and for the fireborn for example because you mentioned it there was a, a third pro progress. There was this uh, back and forth work progress because we invented the Fireborn. In that there was a, a third pro progress. There was this uh, back and forth work progress because we invented the Fireborn, invented their rules set and came across, okay, they feel a bit of... So either they can conquer or they can destroy people, but both that they roosted and came across, okay, they feel a bit of... So either they can conquer or they can destroy people, but both, it's not really dragon-like. So we reinvented the ability to devastate areas, a new kind of not really dragon-like. So we reinvented the ability to devastate areas, a new kind of attack. That's and when we decided this, we had to create a burnt backside for every area tile. And before that, we had once we used one side to uh, show the destroyed areas, we changed the whole game because of one faction. And that's what's, what's Tsukuyumi. It's every faction is part of the core game in other way around. We we feel should have an impact to the game. It's not like you play the humans and you say, okay, you play the humans, I take the insects. No, the thing is, if you play the nomads, all other players know, okay, okay now there are mines and there are heavy shitload of weapons. Now we have the nomads with a lot of shitload of uh, damage and the you affection with a shitload of units. So which do you pick? And that's that's what what I really like about games, and that's why it's part of Tsukuyumi is each player alters and affects the technique set for this game night, which you cannot just uh, regain the second time. So you want to play another game of Tsukuyumi to have another experience. Just pick off one faction and you change it with another and you have a complete different uh, 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 element and uh, play style. And that's really what what I'm really looking for in games. Well, that's uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm super excited because I love the Peace Turtles from Twilight Imperium so I'm sold. I'm 100% sold. I'm all about the Peace Turtles so any defense I'm sold. I'm 100% sold. I'm all about the peace turtles. So any defensive turtley type group of uh, things plodding around with big she uh, big shells is like yes, please. Um, uh, Audrey had a uh, a question sort of slightly linked to that, which is where the idea for the um, 
the whales came from. That's actually like I I'm really interested in that as well because like the three factions I I'm most interested in is the fireborn, the whales, and now the turtles. But uh, yeah, so if you could tell us a bit about the sea clan whales because I think they're they're really unique um, out of uh, in any kind of fantasy setting. I haven't seen something quite like this before. Yeah, the thing is makes totally sense because this game is set on the Trifon uh, floor of the former Pacific. Okay, so there there has to be no. There have been a lot of water. What happened to all these creatures? They were uh, living in that water. And for my brain, it's obvious. Okay, so we have some mammals living there, whales and dolphins and all uh, um, uh, smaller dolphins and uh, and seals. So what happened to them? Okay, seals they they have no problem. They can just walk on land and uh, to sea. But what about whales? So whales, okay. And I really like whales. They, I think they are perfect creatures. And it makes sense as we have the approach of having up, upright walking boar lords. Why not having walking? And this was, you know, I, the, 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 the story I tell you is longer than what happened in my mind. It, it just... It was just like 10 seconds and I had the idea of land walking whales. And what what then came was a long process or a, a process of accepting it because I knew I liked them, but this was the big risk at this moment to um reveal that faction because player can say, okay, now now you're over the top. This is you know, at this moment. Uh, before this, this was a cool this, this was a cool game, but now you walk have land walking whales that kills it. I don't buy that game. And back then, <laughs> this was really a risk. You, and, you would have been fine. You just needed to direct into the Ambulocetus, which is a whale that walked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, so if I want to set a tool that walked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, so if I want to set a tone of Tsukuyumi. I have to introduce the whales with the second expansion and in the first Kickstarter because they are the most weird faction. They weren't at the moment, but they were and in the first Kickstarter because they are the most weird faction. They weren't at the moment, but they were at that moment, but they weren't anymore. Uh, so we said, okay, let's let's let just let's go with this risk, and uh, I did. And I trusted my instincts, and it was correct because now let's go with this risk. And uh, I did, and I trusted my instincts, and it was correct because now we have diplomatic, peaceful, uh, walking whales, and we have a lot of fans. Myself too. I'm a, I'm a, really, really, really because I really like I because I really know how to play these, and. Uh, um, so we have we call them always passive aggressive whales because they they just like I'm just sitting here I'm just I'm just moving you out I'm just displacing you I haven't done anything to you and I'm just clear. that's what I like uh, having factions that they're completely new to to the to the board games and the strategic games and they feel correct in the con in the in the context of the game. Yeah, I really think the whales are a big hit. I. I would uh, bet on it that. Um, now... I, I, yeah, I, I like the little reference to um, to Moby Dick as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the great white one, and uh, we we had so many uh, um, play of words with the uh, with the way Hala as the, the the one of the attacks. Like you can send one of the whales to Valhalla. And uh, sacrifice them for more damage, or we have the Prince of Wales. And so we have a lot of things going on here. And in, in German, it's even uh, it's even more because the word Wahl sounds exactly like election. So you can think about how many uh, how many uh, jokes and uh, uh, stuff is going on in German even more. Um, now. With regards to um, how the game is now and what 
your plans are and are and um, you just uh, described how the fireborn changed the game by you having to add the uh, devastated side to the tiles do you sometimes feel that you are like backed into a corner because the game sometimes feel that you are like backed into a corner because the game is as as it stands and you can't change it anymore because it's released already no and, and the opposite we change it uh, in the sunrise kingdom expansion we change it drastically uh, we said that we change it uh, in the sunrise kingdom expansion we change it drastically uh, we said what about not having a, mo a moon anymore and we said okay let's let's set a, let's move on and say what about having the setting of the okay let's let's set a, let's move on and say what about having the setting of the game uh, near to australia obviously the moon has landed in the northern hemisphere so it's really far off you 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 cannot even see it anymore down in uh, down under and and we said okay there is no moon there's no uh, joint areas, there is gates. And we play the game without a, a centerpiece. And you can create several islands with uh, six hexes here, seven over there, three here, four there. And they're all interconnected with gates, which you can move from one island to the other. So uh, no, I don't feel have, have any hesitations of changing the game backwards. Of course, I cannot print something on the on the on the backside of the tiles, but uh, that doesn't uh, um, hinder us from changing the game. The game, because Tsukuyumi is highly, um, you know, its core. It's not. It's the its core of the game is really small. It's the action cards. It's the um, how the how a game is won. And how do you and conquer units? And you, with each expansion, we can uh, work on this because, in the end, people like new experiences. And to, and King of Kun games games are always only focused on the fun side of the game players. And if they think it's fun to have a huge kaiju uh, unit in the game, which you also will have with uh, Sunrise Kingdom, you can uh, implement kaijus to the game, which, which are fighting on the side of the players against the Oni. Um, so you have uh, big guardian creatures that, that helps you. If people think that's a great expansion I want to play with, that's perfect. And then they don't mind that uh elements change because it feels co it feels correct in in the sense of the of course when you're in australia there is no moon so what's the fuss about and you can still play the, the new five new factions with the moon tile but you can also play the old factions without the moon tile and see like uh, you can still having fun and that's that's what always try experience uh um the game design, even for EOS, there will be, there can be a lot of changes for future expansions, um, and that's where, as long as the players have fun playing it, there's no um, point uh, that you can accumulate are found on the, um, the faction cards. That also helps because each faction can have its own. Uh, path towards victory and you can really I, I, i'm guessing that you you can really um build different uh strategies right into those factions and really alter how the game will is going to be played uh, because that that's what's something that i i really liked even though I, I lost in my game with um with the samurai but i had completely different objectives in my mind as the other player and so we were playing on very different levels, uh, it felt. Uh, and I, I, I enjoyed that because sometimes it was easy to cooperate with uh, another faction because we weren't at all competing on the, the same things. We could occupy the, the same tile and it didn't matter for me. Um, and I, I like that. That's uh, 
it, it has some very strong uh, core design that I'm guessing uh, really help you build on top of it. Absolutely, absolutely. It feels more natural because not, you know, Dark Seed Faction does not run for the same resources as the Nomads do. And that's, that's, that's quite kind of obvious in the state of the narrative. If you just look at a faction with uh, whales, why should they compete for the same resource as uh, uh, Fireborn? And that's something I want to have in the game. Of course, it's about winning the. That's something I want to have in the game. Of course, it's about winning the game with victory points. But how you go there does not involve conflict at its very uh, heart. It's about competing for the highest victory points, but it's not competing against each other. It's about competing for the highest victory points, but it's not competing against each other. That's a really big difference. It's it's uh, competition, but it's not conflict per se. There are factions like the Nomads. They are meant for conflict and also the conflict per se. There are factions like the Nomads they are meant for conflict and also the fireborn. But again, the fireborn, you don't lose anything if they destroy your home zone. They can destroy your home zone and gain three victory points. You you lose nothing in return, but still it's a psychological effect. Do you want to hinder them from doing it or not? How many resources will you spend on this? And all this stuff is going on and that makes a narration in in your head like it's not like we're all di dark seeds this have conflict between players and in Tsukuyumi a passive aggressive faction of whales and a coral reef that have n has no interaction at all for example they still have a fun game because it's about uh, it's about uh, the competition not about the conflict there's so many like asymmetric mechanics they interact with each other but like they don't destroy like your fun playing the game um i wanted to ask if there's like if do you have a like a favorite mechanic like a faction mechanic or like in general uh, that happens in sukuyumi oh it's a difficult question but <laughs> it's, it's not it's not uh, difficult in a sense but having um you know, when I state what I like more most, uh, it can be felt as de degrading others. Um, that's why I don't talk about uh, creating others. Um, that's why I don't talk about uh, favorite factions or something. I can tell, talk, talk more about things I'm proud of as a game designer because sometimes I feel like having this really cool idea from a concept makes that's a deal for me and one of and one of this is the is the combat mechanics i i'm really proud that after 3 years we, uh, years we came up uh, with a combat mechanics that is uh really comes from my heart as we really analyzed how board games are played Especially, especially when it comes to conflict games or combat, uh, like area games, uh, area control games or combat games, it's like people holding back on attacks if they cannot win. So people, so games designed to, okay, let's make it uh, um, if they cannot win. So people, so games designed to okay, let's make it uh, um, countable so I can say I will win this fight. Then the defender is on the other side like, yeah, okay, this game, this battle feels boring for me because I can. So I can say I will win this fight. Then the defender is on the other side like, yeah, okay, this game, this battle feels boring for me because I cannot change the outcome. So, so we have uh, two completely different uh, artificial problems, the attacker does not want to attack if they cannot win the outcome. So so we have uh, two completely different uh, artificial problems. The attacker does not want to attack if they cannot win. And the defender feel overthrown by 
an action of the other player and that totally destroys their plan. In our natural experience, there is no such thing as one, one person decides and the other one only follows. That's why we came up with this uh, system of dialogue. Like we gave both something in their hands and that's why I really like the attacker decides what kind of surprise for the attacker. And that, that's what I'm really proud of um, in Tsukuyumi. Um, what I also really was proud of is the idea for the Dark Crusader. As we struggled for one year, we struggled for finding the right mechanic with the Oni. And they should somehow use the Oni towards their own benefit. So we came up with Woods. Oni does not attack Dark Crusaders, but do they only attack areas where the Dark Crusaders are in because they are other players? And you can, you know, we have a lot of uh, small problems going on with the end. We have a lot of uh, small problems going on with the engine. And at one point, it was okay, why not make it as a general rule like? Only Dark Crusader controls the Oni ever. So whenever another player has an action card, it's like only Dark Crusader controls the Oni ever. So whenever another player has an action card, it says place two Oni, it's the Dark Crusader that plays the Oni. And this way, all of what we wanted to tell was immediately there because the player will never, it's the Dark Crusader that plays the Oni. And this way, all of what we wanted to tell was immediately there because the player will never harm his, himself because he decides where to place Oni and where they attack. So we don't need any special rules to exclude Onis. You will not, not attack your own areas, of course. And that's one element where, where I felt like, cool, this is a really, really nice how we can get rid of 90% of the rules, go for one rule, which alters the game dramatically beside of the areas. It felt like a, a big load of work for us at this time because we have to overclue all area tiles <coughs> on our prototype. But when, once it was there, it was so easy and it was there. People don't have to remember anything or learn special rules. If, they, if it's flipped, it's zero victory point. Oh, that answer was totally fine. Like I was asking, like which, which uh, like mechanic you feel like you you hit hit like the perfect spot for it, and that's exactly what you, uh, what you answered. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm assuming that uh, listeners might be a little confused now. You talk about the Dark Crusaders and. Um, People that got into the last Kickstarter with the miniatures uh, don't see any Dark Crusaders with their stuff um, because they have been released as a standy version because Tsukuyumi in 2018 got released um, because they have been released as a standy version because Tsukuyumi in 2018 got released as standy version and then this year as a, a miniature version are there plans to uh, continue the miniature series? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are there plans to uh, continue the miniature series? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are, we are already have ninety percent of the of the uh, miniature models here. I already um, hi, uh, green lighted them. They are already sitting the models here. I already. Um, I uh, green lighted them. They're already sitting on our t uh, computers. We had it to, we had to uh, await the shipment of the uh, miniatures version. Uh, we are uh, still doing the final uh, adjustments on the rules. But in any case, the standee version will have the Sunrise Kingdom expansion and the Dark Crusader ahead of the miniature holders. Which is in fact a small, uh, small uh, advantage for the miniature holders, because uh, uh, the standee users uh, will first see uh, any any minor mistakes that might have happened to the to the version, which we don't expect, but still. And then next year, 
assumingly uh, the the Sunrise miniature version will hit the Kickstarters. So you will have six new factions: the Dark Crusader and all of the Sunrise Kingdom factions. The the Chrono Masters. Uh, stand the only at the moment and there are no plans at the moment for having miniatures but as I know from Grey, Grey Fox Games um, pretty sure if, if he sees a chance the Chrono Master will soon follow for, for the miniatures which is cool because Chrono Masters are time traveling el- uh, uh, apes and monkeys so there are 12, 12 uh, time traveling monkeys which is a nice <laughs> uh, nice element yeah, they're pretty yeah. interesting in the playtest. Oh, yeah. Much I can say. <laughs> Did the Dark Crusader, the Chrono Masters are the same thing. We had like six iterations. How to have the time traveling element in the board game? Because time traveling is it's such a powerful narrative tool, but it's extremely hard to find rules for it. And I think in the context of Tsukuyumi that we have... Uh, found a really interesting concept of um, how you how you introduce time travel into board game. Well, I mean, it's it's. I, I see what you did with that faction's number. I mean, it's a very specific number of monkeys to have. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, I, <laughs> I hope you, you know, I'd love to see it because I love Anachrony uh, and that has time travel in it as a worker placement game. Yeah. And it's super cool how they did it. So. Way more limited uh, elements, like there's no resource you can time travel back and forth. And uh, that's, that's why we came up with the, 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 that they start the game with a lot of already conquered uh, areas. And other players have against that, you know, because they know they already have all these areas. And now they, the players, the players start uh, playing the game backwards, t- like narrative wise, because the, the Kuro Master already have won. Okay. That's, that's, that's the, the, the idea. Mm. They all, and it's the, it's up to the players uh, to change the future uh, in, in, uh, let them, don't let them win. And the, the Chrono Masters play backwards because they already start as the strongest victory point holder and have to defend their points until the end of the game. And that's 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 what in the in this limited amount of uh, elements I can have in Tsukuyumi without resources and something like that. That feels that that grabs the idea of time travel, I guess. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out. I do hope they come out in miniatures. Uh, speaking of which, uh, who's the, they're, they're not huge, but they're really nicely detailed. Yeah, we have uh, we had uh, for the core box we had six or seven different uh, miniatures uh, designer like uh, uh, um, uh, modelers. So they 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 will come from all over the world. We had uh, Italian. I think most of them came from America. Most of some of them are f- more f- more famous than the others, so we have uh, this is a really uh, we can maybe ca- I can uh, in the, I think in the Im- imprint you can see the names of the of the of the designers. Yeah. Because, so you had maybe like what was it one to give them a, a theme and cohesion in style? Yeah, we had we had <laughs> one designer for the Cyber Samurai, and he also did the Boar Lords and the. And Gabrielle, which uh, she did the uh, Fireborn and the, the Whales completely. So we, we gave them faction wise. Um, you know, they, they, they did the whole faction. So they the faction fields uh, felt uh, um, um, whole, holistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, cohesive. Yeah, cohesive. Yeah. yeah, and but in the in the in the end we had sent all data to a russian company uh, they, they their main approach is that they um make those miniatures fit the the final printing process of um this cast plastic plastic cast and of um this cast plastic plastic cast and they also made sure that the style of the miniatures um, in, in, the, in the total game 
felt more of the same universe. So it was the, in, in the in the total game felt more of the same universe. So it was the the modelers they created more of more or less their own style, but it was this uh, Russian company, Hunga, which did the the uh, complete overall work to make it cohesive over the whole Hunga which did the, the uh, complete overall work to make it cohesive over the whole the whole factions okay and that's also why producing this kind of game like Tsukuyumi we have maybe maybe you you're not con uh, um no you're not con uh, um know all these facts behind the, the scenes uh like in 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 a standard board game you have like 20 different molds which is a metal for metal form where you can put your plastic in and each form costs fortune each form so each miniature with a, a pose is one one of these molds and in Tsukuyumi we had more than 45 i think we all, we have even more than 50 with the mascots and all this stuff so where there was really really a lot of things going on with this game as uh, uh, Grey Fox really wanted to to catch the atmosphere of the standees version that's why we had to cut back on some of the variability as you can see in the illustrations there were 14 different nomads we in the miniatures version now have, now have seven different nomad miniatures which is still a lot for a board game if you check back with other board games, I would exclude cool mini uh, games, of course. You will see there's not that much of different miniatures, but you know, having one mold ten, 10 times, it's easier and it's cheaper than having 10 miniatures each unique. And that's why this process was so long, because all of these... 50 of molds have to go through to to uh, to Russia they had to reshape and recreate uh, all miniatures and make these molds then the molds were done and all this stuff this is this taking month which i didn't knew before that i i spent one month only revisiting all miniatures because i did all the illustrations and for me it was like not that's not a hard part making miniatures from that but actually it was it was only one month pure work for me checking all miniatures giving feedback to the modelers they have to revisit it and all this stuff and that took longer than than everybody uh, of us expected so having a miniatures game is well, it's, it's it's a thing <laughs> Uh, but thank you that you uh, really liked the, the miniatures because I think they turned out pretty good. And for me, it felt like a dream, a dream come true because, of course, when you plan a, a game like Tsukuyumi in your head, you think, oh, miniatures would be nice. But then you check only the smallest uh, uh, quotes from a printing company and say, okay, what does one miniature cost in person? No, I, I, we can't do 10, we can't do hundreds. And that's why we go to uh, for the standy version. And then Cray Fox came along and said, "This game really should, should deserve miniatures, and saw the potential and throw a lot of work and, and passion on that um, to create this this game, a second iteration with miniatures. And now we have both. For me, as a game designer from Germany, this feels like more than I can hope for." Um. I also, just to touch back, as you were talking about the time and I didn't have a chance to say, I really like that you baked in the destroyed um, tiles on the backs of everything. One of my big bugbear annoyances is if somebody's printed tiles and you're not using both sides, yeah. there's no reason for it. Uh, and you, you even talked about you were originally going to have variations on the other sides, which I was like, ooh, that's, yeah, this is an ethos I like, you know, mm -hmm. more game in the same space. Yeah. So... Yeah, I just wanted to say I, I, I like that. Thank you very much. Yeah. But it's to do with the dragons, so apparently I seem to like everything to do with the dragons <laughs> anyway, for some reason. I It might do, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> might, might be the national animal, and then the other faction I quite like might just happen to have the same name. I don't know. Perhaps <laughs> I'm biased in some manner. Perfect. Maybe you, yeah. Maybe you will also like the laser vikings. 
Uh, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, Please. Uh, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, if they're highly aggressive, probably not. Um, I like I like factions that are small with a few units, uh, or I like really defensive factions. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the Laser Vikings were really defensive, but that doesn't fit the theme. Were really defensive, but that doesn't fit the theme. Yeah, yeah. The de defense Vikings, it's not a thing. <laughs> mm. I have another question from Audrey. Uh, uh, they want to know if... Um, if the you were at all inspired by Majora's Mask with the concept of if the you were at all inspired by Majora's Mask with the concept of of the moon crashing down at all, actually not because uh, uh, I have no idea what what this mask is coming from. What is Majora's Mask? So Majora's Mask is a Nintendo game in a time loop where the moon is crashing down and they have to kind of like. Re reset the day over and over until they finally get it right and stop it. It's a, ah. I've never played it. It's a fairly popular, I think, N64 game. Yeah, it's N64, um, but it has very... been uh, republished in, in so many systems since then. Uh, you can play it on 3D. There's a port on the Wii, I'm sure of that because I played it. Uh, I think that there's, there's one too on GameCube and I'm guessing that on Switch there's some ways to play it. And obviously on computer using our uh, emulation because Oh, okay. But it, it's an old game and it's a, a very a big fan fav favorite. And the idea is that yeah, the, the moon is down on this town, and uh, it's a very angry moon that uh, that uh, people people remember. It has a very iconic face, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah okay. Actually, how I came up with the idea was I was working on. Um, uh, um, so I, I was working with a friend of mine who has a really nice uh, um, setting. He, this was called Rust Raiders, which in fact had uh, that they uh, tried to move the, uh, the, uh, the Earth out of the way of a comet for a couple of uh, uh, hours. So they invented time traveling just to make woof, woof, and then they, they re reappear the Earth in the same spot. Uh, but this gone horribly wrong, and they totally shifted all time zones together. So we have dinosaurs, we have um, future factions, and we have post apocalyptic stuff and all these uh, things. And I, I created first Tsukuyumi for this uh, setting because I wanted to uh, to work again with this setting. I did a shitload of illustrations for in my in my study time in my studying load of illustrations for in my in my study time in my studying time and i wanted to to come up with a board game with this theme unfortunately this doesn't work out so we we did not uh, proceed on this but i liked i li still like the idea of having this really uh this but i liked i li still like the idea of having these really um, unique factions mixed up together in the same universe. Of course, I don't want to have the time travel. And I said, okay, what about having really weird factions in the same universe? And it needs... And I said, okay, what about having really weird factions in the same universe? And it needs an eye catcher and, a, and a, something that catches your brain once you tell it. And that, that's when the moon came up. I said, what about sitting, having the moon sitting on Earth? And like, okay, like, okay, it's a nice idea. Let's try this. And that's, that's where we moved on from that. And of course, today it has nothing to do with Rust Traders anymore, but that's where it originated from. Okay, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Starter right now, which I have on Remind Me. Um. Just to interject. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I mean, I, I do think we should talk about the um, criticism for the last Kickstarter. Okay, sorry. Because yep, I sure. think that's if we don't talk about it, I could imagine people are like, "Hey, why don't the RPG?" Which I'm very interested by. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Now I was just looking at the clock, and we're like at three thirty. But okay, okay then Kara, so you take yeah, no, it's about, fine. You take talk charge. About the Kickstarter, yep. then tabletop, and then a short outlook to EOS. 
Perfect. Right. Okay, okay then Karen. You, Felix. Sure. The, uh, how Grey Fox Games uh, approached you regarding miniatures and uh, the Kickstarter. And um, I mean, I personally haven't received uh, the miniature version. Um, I am thinking about getting it uh, in addition to my standee version. Um, but um, of course, I of course I did stumble across um, posts and comments also on your current Kickstarter regarding the quality of the miniature version. Um, can you shed a light on what's going on there? Uh, what are the alleged, problem, the alleged problems with it? And maybe what that does with yourself as the designer of the game. Of course, you would love for everyone to love your game. So first of all, the game is still lovable. It's The game is not broken or destroyed or something so this thing so this game is still completely enjoyable uh, what happened is we and gray fox first time ever worked together also we never worked together together with any company as gray fox also so we had some kind of um together with any company as gray fox also so we had some kind of um communication mistakes happening which is not you know like reading in the internet feels like everything is really a catastrophe it isn't we played the miniatures version it feels exactly the same game like everything is really a catastrophe it isn't we played the miniatures version it feels exactly the same game we have um concerns about having three of these area tiles has a have different area backsides uh, on the on the other side, like a destroyed side. For me, as a game, have different area backsides. Uh, on the on the other side, like a destroyed side. For me, as a game designer, I said that's cool having different game. On you know, if there's a dragon uh, bombing a, 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 a lava bomb on it, would change the area. People felt out acknowledging back with me, announced it as a mistake and reprinted these area tiles. So something that was not a problem at all suddenly came out, oh, no, it's a problem. But it wasn't, OK? So my problem was I never thought about talking about this it's with different backsides. It's a feature, not a bug. Having only three feels like a bug. If it, So you know what, that's what I mean. Like, nothing really bad happens. It's just like. Uh, uh, if you if you write a list, a lot of small things add up. We had uh, in the end, uh, I, I don't drop any names, but between both companies, there was a third party person which took control of uh, for of Tsukuyumi for the uh, last two years. What happened is this person never worked in that field before. Field before, okay. And then maybe that's everything I should say here. And um, this this employee, while the Kickstarter was still uh, in printing and all these, uh, um, left the company and changed to another, another company. And printing and all these, uh, um, left the company and changed to another, another company. And um, that's where also some uh, mistakes happened, not by not because bad work, but also like uh, not correct uh, communication on all these bad work, but also like uh, not correct uh, communication on all these stuff. The car for, people often talk about the quality of the cards. They're actually the best quality you can have in China, like a standee version we printed in Germany. And there is a difference between European cards and Chinese cards. Because European cards tend to have a thicker or more stable uh, paper. In China, the thing we printed in Tsukuyumi is the, the ex most of pa expensive cards we have in China. And if you uh, shoot the cost way, uh, way above everything people would pay for. Uh, so that's, that's not a problem. That's actually the best quality you can uh, get in China. And did I miss out on something? 
So totally saying Cray Fox, no, no, not even, but but also Cray Fox, they spent so many money, so much money and time and passion and love for this project. We did, but still not not everything turned out perfect in the sense of a product. It's still the same game with the same quality of play in a sense of could could this and this be better? Maybe. It's it's happening. We're just humans. We're companies, and uh, I can really understand if people say, "I don't play games with mistakes," but then again, people say, "I don't play games with mistakes," but then again, show me any game without mistakes. So, um, so we are, so to make it clear. I'm far away from uh, apologizing because we done nothing on I'm far away from uh, apologizing because we done nothing on purposely wrong okay so there is elements that could be better we could have taken more care of and that's the problem we should have taken more care of but we didn't know that we have to take care of it of and that's the problem we should have taken more care of but we didn't know that we have to take care of it because you say, you say, this and this and this are the steps we have to do. We all we did it, we checked it, but none of us checked some elements because we don't have to, and checked some elements because we don't have to, and we fixed ninety nine percent of this already with uh, reprinting cards and sending out uh, errata and all this stuff. And what we're doing now is not only doing errata, but also getting on and creating a new rule set, which is not a correction of the old one, but an enhanced uh, th uh, th secondary version. Because now we learned from over five thousand players, which could be, which could have been explained better, rather than having mistakes. So we we are in a we are in a communication trap here. Everything we address and say, hey, you can you can do this to improve your game experience feels like we're admitting a, a mistake. But actually what we do, what we're doing is collecting problems FAQ and releasing better rule sets. But this feels like admitting mistakes. And it's not. We're it's the same rule set like in the standee version, but we now understand. Oh, you can explain mo movement rules with two sentence less rules, and it's even easier to understand. And we released this, and then uh, I think the internet, uh, uh, you know, it's like uh, 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 rumors. It, this, yeah, I read about this and this and this uh, forum here, but it's it's not correct. If you ask me, I would have said it's not correct. So, so uh, uh, for me. The damage with Tsukuyumi is not the things that actually had happened, because these are so little. If most ninety percent of people will never ever notice that there is any mistakes, because they are so little and the game is still at all and all this stuff. But what happened is, uh, it's a huge backlash that somehow hurt the 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 image of the companies of both of us and also the game which i think the, the game deserves better like because it's really a well thought out game and i uh, that's why i'm looking forward for the sunrise kingdom expansion because in this of course we will offer again all core material and all this stuff and we can um make sure that all stuff that are reported, we can uh, correct in there. But again, the game is still the same. We haven't changed anything except this one rule that st with the stats are not printed on the standees anymore. That's why we changed the movement through units uh, rules to make it a bit easier, which have, which could also have been done by complex rules uh, anyway. So, yeah, I think. Uh, I hope for Tsukuyumi that we will have a second chance to prove that uh, to people that 
this is a really thought out game and it can bring to the to fun to the to the table well, with uh the time of erratas we live in that um i mean i've seen comments like what there's like three or four pages of errata and so many mistakes and then you look at the errata and you notice no a lot of those things aren't really mistakes it's just clarifications or answering or answering of questions that came up and um, the actual amount of mistakes when you like okay some of those are like typos and you would have understood it anyway but for the sake of it it's added as well and uh, what's left is maybe uh, what's left is maybe a handful of, of small things so um, yeah people should really look at hey what is actually addressed there and not just how much uh, is addressed if anything as a as a player i always think that having a lot of erratas is i i, I mean not uh not 20 pages but if you have uh, a few pages of errata it means that you you've seen you know any problem or any clarification that might be needed in a game and that means that well you know um the 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 next game or the next edition of this game will be a lot more streamlined you know that the developers uh is are you know learning from anything that might happen any communication between people plus you know a board game it's impossible not to it's impossible to see every interaction that every um rule is going to have with like tukuyumi with so many factions that that interact with each other each other it's not a surprise that uh sometimes things are not planned and it's i think that it's important for uh, a developer to to you know look at that and, and try to make their game better and i think that's a, a pretty a pretty good show someone walking um you know behind the machine yeah that's the thing with our errata is since uh, even since uh, march we haven't had to update or change or uh, any rule everything is really exact at its spot what we have with the errata is the understanding of how we explain the rules. That's a complete different topic. Like, and in, in total, five people in total in the whole internet ask us, can you clarify on how to move through enemy units? Okay, so we're like, okay, if five people have problems, we can again explain it. We, we're just explaining the same rule again but with other words. It's not like the first thing is was wrong, but for some people, the explanation was not, can, can I use this unit to do this and this and this? There was questions and we said, okay, we can address this, not by only answering this question, but saying, okay, we can write the core rule. If we, if we implement the question in the core rule, just in case people want to understand the rule better. That does, does that not mean that the, 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 the rule was bad, but we enhanced on explaining the same rule. And we have learned, and that's what I really uh, took from this year, is a thin line between having doing everything correct as a game designer and having uh, published it as a publisher because they are completely different things. As a game designer, I can do everything correct by just placing an errata. If by just placing an errata, in the sense of customer support, this could be the worst you can do. You know, you know what I mean? And I don't say that Tsukuyumi miniature version is perfect. I know there are a couple of issues and they have, we have addressed them. I know there are a couple of issues and they have, we have addressed them. We said, okay, we printed the wrong side on two of the minute of the standees. We apologize for that. We sent out stickers. Still, the game is completely fine, playable. We apologize for this mistake. This should not happen. And Chris. Still, the game is completely fine, playable. We apologize for this mistake. This should not happen and will not happen again. And this, these elements we do not 
refuse. We, we've done this. Some of them were done by us, someone else. None of them were done by us, someone else. No matter, we, we, we say we, we, we stay behind this game and we are, we are looking forward to, in the future to fix it and even improve it. And we're still working on Sukuyumi to make it better in the sense of you can learn it easier, you understand it better, or you can teach it easier. And that's why we working on the rule book and writing really long and really um, excessive uh, errata because we want to help the players play our game. But what we somehow gave away is there were a lot of things wrong in there if they sent out an errata like this. <laughs> and that's what I learned. Yeah, okay. So um, at the start, um, you talked about um, you like this role playing in Tsukuyumi. You know that, um, hey, I want to play as these bugs and spread everywhere, or I want to play these high tech cyber samurai. and. And then you decided, why not go a step further? <laughs> yeah, that's why we announced the role playing game. Uh, something that was on the horizon, uh, horizon all the time, uh, as uh, friends of the game, and always uh, somehow asked for. And uh, last year we said, okay, let's 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 check if people are really interested in having a role-playing game. I did any uh, role-playing game at this moment. We had some ideas for rules and all this, the world. So we we said, okay, let's, let's use Kickstarter exactly for what it was before, like checking if people are interested in backing this game. And they were. And started doing, working on this project right after the Kickstarter. So we are, we are, we're in a good position at the moment. I wrote like, we're at 195 pages already with text. Uh, of course, there needs st still a lot of illustrations to be done and more text to text. Uh, of course, there needs st still a lot of illustrations to be done and more text. But me, uh, we are only missing six factions uh, of being written. The rest is already there we we sent out a huge uh, pre, uh, uh, um, preview it was already there we we sent out a huge uh, pre, uh, uh, um, preview rule book uh, i think two or three months ago which you can still uh, download and or have a look at we invented specially for this game so okay so to show the passion we we, we have for this game invented specially for this game so okay so to show the passion we, we, we have for this game, we, we uh, had 50% of the game and the book written already. And we, we, uh, we read through the text and say, <clears throat> somehow, even if we, are, we, we have everything done perfect, somehow it doesn't feel Tsukuyumi-esque. Just from the just from how you um, uh, receive or, or, or read the book. And that's when we just, okay, to have the Tsukuyumi experience, we have to reshape our texts and make it more Tsukuyumi-esque. That's what we showed and proven in the last PDA what I, what I sent, where we invented context-based storytelling. And when you're reading through a regular role-playing text, it says um, the people of mm -hmm, go uh, live in a very dangerous place. There are often attacks by mm -hmm, and they live. They, they, most people love the color green and mm -hmm. okay. They try to uh, create an atmosphere for something. In the effect, uh, in the end, um, ninety percent of this stuff will not make it to the to the final role playing experience on the table, because the game master forgot about it. Because in this really long text, uh, it does not affect the gameplay because uh, the city uh, inhabitants that love the color yellow does not fit to my adventure. All this stuff, you know, like and the attacks for the city. 
does not play any role in my game. So what I've what what is the real information uh, content I took with this took with this text, and we we thought okay by the by the sheer amount of things we in stuff we need for Tsukuyumi because we want to ex, uh, 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 explore the whole world. If we go on like this, we will have one thousand pages. No one can ever remember. And this, we will have one thousand pages. No one can ever remember. And especially for factions and and creatures, you don't usually see in your uh, uh, in your standard role playing game. You know, you don't need another uh, long. Business. You don't usually see in your uh, uh, in your standard role playing game. You know, you don't need another uh, long uh, description about orcs or elves. Yes. It could be two sentences and everybody's on the same page. But uh, if you have a faction description about orcs or elves, yes, it could be two sentences and everybody's on the same page. But uh, if you have a faction of land walking whales, you need way, 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 way more context. And we need 20 or even 30 pages per faction, 30 pages per faction to get to to nail them we we proven we like okay we have 10 pages now but still we we're not going to the corner of the faction how do you see okay so we just made them uh, made the math and say okay we have 20 factions announced all of them need to come up with the with the, okay we cannot we cannot uh, achieve this within an normal amount of time people will give us to create this book and also, nobody wants to read a thousand pages book. And that's when we come up with context based storytelling. And this is completely different. We show a lot. Um, I, I make an example. If you're looking at a, a, a map of the world and the moon, and there is a text saying, if you go here, you will die. This is a really brave, like bold statement. There's down below, there's another uh, sentence. And the third sentence, which is below that, but also the Oni looking for victims here that they can turn into Oni. Okay, so the next time the game master is checking, okay, what's in that region? He just goes to Oni. Okay, so the next time the game master is checking, okay, what's in that region? He just goes to the page, see, okay, people will die here. Okay, that makes a story. And then he just reads the context and say, okay, I can make a story out of this because you don't need more info will die here. Okay, that makes a story. And then he just reads the context and say, okay, I can make a story out of this because you don't need more information about this region as this. This is context-based. It's what you really need for your brain to get information about this region as this. This is context-based. It's what you really need for your brain to get into telling stories. Not in about repeating our game, our world design, but using our world design experience. And that's what I think role-playing is about. It's not about recreating everything correct like in dsr the, the black eye where you where everything is completely plotted out and you cannot you cannot use this door why not because this house was descri uh, descri described in pay on page 15 there is no door yeah, but but it would be a good story but there is no door so we think the i i, I prefer a role-playing game with a bit more of a sandbox element but still people buy into Tsukuyumi for these factions like land walking whales and laser vikings so they need information but you, they, the information should be given as I think that game masters and players are excited to explore them in their story in their in their role playing not being limited but being enhanced by fusive role uh, saying you don't you cannot do this, but if you go there, this will happen. That's a completely different uh, sentence. Players should players should not go there. 
But if you say people, uh, players can go there, but they have it's the story and the narration in your head. And if I point another arrow at the same region and saying battle group three or battle group four were deployed here and we lost contact, in your brain, you start creating a story. And, right now. And, <laughs> and, and uh, the same goes for the factions. We, I, I spent days. Yeah, I thought this is easier, but it's, uh, it's not. I'm spending days of, on creating context on factions that are already established. Are already established. Um, for example, uh, uh, um, I've just uh, written the, the um, uh, Laser Vikings. There, there is a, there's a sentence saying the Laser Vikings recruit children to the Laser Vikings recruit children to reinforce their troops. So Im immediately you have a context. You have no relation because it's a it's a complete fictional faction, but when you read a sentence like this, you start having emotions and context. This, you start having emotions and context, and you expect something of them. Why are they recruiting children as their troops? So you are eager to read the next sentence, and the next sentence gives you another context, which is then explored, then explored in the third uh, paragraph. And this is what leads you through the, the factions, having one element of statement and context leading to the another context. And you want to read all of this, and in your head, it creates a story. And that's, it's a lot of fun doing it uh, for me. And I'm also looking forward to creating all the illustrations for the role-playing game. Um, I must admit, creating a game of higher player experience took longer than I thought. That's, <laughs> but we will have we will not make it until October, obviously. But I think the the what happens inside the box and what you in, the, in your ex play experience will will made up for for the delay, hopefully. Yeah. Well, really looking forward to. Um more of that <laughs> you you can you can download the pdf and check on your check uh, check this by yourself we have i think it's 60 pages uh, we gave away for free uh, uh you maybe you can uh, post the the pdf in your comment section below uh you maybe you can uh, post the the pdf in your comment section below once this podcast is is aired so everybody can check out and and check for themselves if this works for you and if you feel like giving us uh, input like either you because you like it or giving us uh, input like either you because you like it or you say oh that that, that doesn't work for me please send it us uh, send it us uh, i'm really looking forward to hear about it so i think we have time for one final question don't we all right then you wanted to talk about yes Right, Fen, you wanted to talk about EAS? Yes. Yes, yes. So you currently have, um, at the point of recording, EOS is live, uh, and um, I'm hovering around the remind me kind of, I'm very tempted. It's a good, I'm hovering around the remind me kind of, I'm very tempted. It's a good price, but just. A quick pitch on the game. Sell me on it, because I'm almost there. Yeah, EOS is our approach of one of my most beloved uh, game mechanic approach of one of my most beloved uh, game mechanic, which is um, um, engine building. I really like uh, engine building, but again, my creative. Um, Personality says, what about having a symmetric engine engine building? And that's where EOS was born from. Um, so EOS is a game where players choose one out of seven nations that aim to 
make the world a better place because there are demons and demon lords bringing war and siege to the people, famine, death, war, all this stuff. And people are hopeless because they will lose the war if they do not find a solution for that. Some older, uh, there was an island of angels called Eos, somewhere in the, in the seas with the fog around it. So they, brave seafarers sail out to find Eos and free and awake the petrified angels. With the power of the they will spark hope and create a better world by creating chronicle entries. So the game is merely about winning battles against the demon lords, uh, awaking angels, and with the power of the angels, you will then can uh, win epic battles and uh, win the game by collecting most victory points. But the game ends once a crucial number of chronicle entries were made. And that's where the game has a semi-cooperative element. It's not semi-cooperative, but together end the game. Each action that affects uh, which like a, a winning epic battle or freeing an angel adds one point to the Chronicle of Eos. And if 6, 9, 12 or 15 of these entries were scored, the game ends because you've done enough good, you've done enough good for the world to, to, um, to win the game, uh, to end the game. And the asymmetry is in every element. So each nation itself is uh, uh, unique and asymmetric to each other. And also like the engine can be boosted, be boosted and enhanced in asymmetric ways because each angel uh, you awake really adds a unique special ability or strong, uh, st strong action to your engine, which can either enhance and boost your engine or make up make up for a, for a weakness or even you can move it into a complete new direction your engine hasn't had no strength or weakness before uh, so awaking the the, the 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 correct angels for you could be a crucial uh, strategy and eos lives about uh, lives from that you can have your own decisions uh, in which way you want to win and end the game. You are not obliged to free angels. Angel grant you big bonuses. But you can also just go for killing demon lords or uh, winning epic battles or collecting and destroying as much demon imps as you want, and you can. So there are several ways of winning the game, either by moving your ship a lot or moving your ship as few as possible. It's up to the players to find their way. And the game is also like progressive. Uh, you don't have to plan out everything from the beginning and you're tracked to one of these uh, strategies, but you can alter and change your engine all the time. You can enhance and boost it in a really uh, short amount of time and, and uh, create your own play style. And the element I'm really, really looking for and I love is the um, the engine pressure concept. Like normal bo uh, engine builders, you have your engine and the, the engine gets getting better and better and better. And the one who has the best engine automatically wins and you maybe don't have any t chance to um, to um, catch up. Uh, we, we are not changing this because that's what engine building is about. But we... Uh, introduce pre pre engine pressure by the demon lords. The one example is if there's the demon lord Amban, no player, this a, you're in this together, no player can have more than 30 coins. This means every player has to cope with this problem and now your engine has to perform under this element of pressure. And then you have to prove whether you're good at it and how you can exploit your engine work having a walk around of the, uh, this. Or you can even go for this demon lord, kill it to remove the pressure. And each of the 12 demon lords 
adds a different element of pressure to the engine, which creates a unique set of uh, for every game. So one game you have a cap of 30 coins and another one shields cannot use to block demons, which will enhance a lot of the demon tracks. Uh, or other one says, every time you score a Chronicle entry, you gain five victory points less. So having interesting in scoring victory points. And this makes actually shifting shifting elements of uh, of uh, for every uh, session of the game you play and which makes it unique every time you play it Kara, you may you maybe you can uh, uh... I, I agree um i mean the, you have said things i haven't really thought about in that way but um yeah true um the, uh, especially this whole demon lords uh, and their aura forcing you to change your approach and also for example as you said the demon lord that demon lord that lets you uh, only have like 30 coins if you have an engine or a faction that is predominantly having a lot of money suddenly you lose this advantage and um, you have to to think around it and decide okay how am i handling this now and is the is the disadvantage i'm getting for me bigger than for the others does it force me to maybe kill this demon lord so i um, can fully enjoy my engine again or so yeah that's true and also there's only positive player interaction which i really uh, like myself so you cannot harm or destroy other players, but you will have interactions, not too much because engine building is always about somehow uh, player board management on your own. But still, we have interactions um, named like this. If you allow the player with the least victory points to gain 10 coins from the supply, you gain two victory points. Or if you give if you allow the player with the least victory points to draw two journey cards from the draw pile, you are from the draw pile you are awarded two victory points. So in helping other people, creating a better world, you also get victory points, and that's one what I say positive player interaction. You can also kill the demons from other players' boards, and that's one what I say positive player interaction. You can also kill the demons from other players' boards so they will have less minus victory points and less problems with the demons and you get rewarded for that with glory and victory points. Will have less minus victory points and less problems with the demons and you get rewarded for that with glory and victory points. So in helping each other, Players will gain more victory points, but also help progress the game. And that's also also help progress the game. And that's also the catch-up mechanic in its own, because most of the time the player with the least victory points uh, profit from that. That player will gain a boost from the other players to maybe catch up or stay uh, with the field of the other topic and theme. but. I think we approach it in a really funny and uh, entertaining way because I like dark themes with uh, a, a, a nice and light uh, um, approach. And I've spent three years now creating EOS and one play in. And uh, I really like, for example, the Quanan Empire, which is uh, these these five squids, like uh, Kraken people, and they have also a Kraken they can use in the game or the Gloin, which are the best and most uh, 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 experienced mercenaries. Singing squids, you really, <laughs> that's all you needed to say. Right at the start, I, I would have just been like, okay, I'm sold. All right, yep. yep. And um, um, for I'm... EOS, we have nine more days in the Kickstarter and you don't have to stumble blindly in it. You can play it for free. Uh, on our table stumble blindly in it you can play it for free uh, on our tabletop simulator so it's the it's the game you can play it it's there you don't have to pay anything if you don't want to and this stays up so 
you you're not obliged to give us money actually but we uh, but if you want we are we are really happy if you're really happy if you do so <laughs> Uh, will there be a late pledge option? Because when people hear this podcast, the um, Kickstarter will be finished. Would they be able to late pledge? Well, that's great. Well, um, I'm afraid, though, on that note, it's all we have time for in this episode. You can catch us over at... That's great. Well, um, I'm afraid, though, on that note, it's all we have time for in this episode. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash The Last Standy or as The Last Standy on Twitter. And Felix, where can people find you? Actually at kingrakun.com or even on Patreon. We have some more Facebook. Bye from Felix. Thank you very much for having me. It was fun, even though I talked way more than you, but I had fun talking about the stuff I really, really love. And I hope you had a good time with me. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation and see you next time. <laughs> thank you very well, much th for coming. Yeah. Thanks, Felix, and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goodbye from Kara. And from Germany, auf Wiederhören. Yeah, and myself. And remember that the second E in Standy for this episode, I'm going to give it to Eos. Bye.